India has officially declared and entered the aircraft carrier race with China. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has boldly announced that India will make five to six new aircraft carriers. The aim is naval power parity with China and a total naval domination of Pakistan while making India a true blue water naval power, capable of projecting power from the South China Sea in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Plans are in place for the Indian Navy to add a third massive aircraft carrier to its fleet soon. But will this enable the Indian Navy to compete with China's World War II style naval expansion, especially in its aircraft carrier fleet? In a bold revelation by India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on the 15th of May, India will soon kickstart the process of building its third aircraft carrier, Krishnan, the INS Vishal. IAC 2 or INS Vishal will be a 45,000 ton sister ship of INS Vikrant commissioned in 2022. In addition to INS Vikrant, which was the first indigenous aircraft carrier, India has one more aircraft carrier, INS Vikram Ditya, sourced from Russia in 2013. The Indian Navy proposed constructing the second indigenous aircraft carrier, INS Vishal, at the Cochin Shipyard Limited at Kochi. Remember, the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Defence in January last year suggested the need of having a third seagoing aircraft carrier. It said, and I quote, The reach and flexibility of a carrier is far superior to military airfields in far-flung island territories. So let's decode why there was a need for the Indian Navy to arm itself with a third aircraft carrier and that too at an astronomical cost of $5 billion and the need for India to have five, six more new aircraft carriers after that. The answer is simple. INS Vishal will help to pack a punch to dominate India's area of maritime interest, which expands from the Indian Ocean region between the state of Hormuz on the western front and the Strait of Malacca on the eastern front to extend into what could become the epicentre of World War III, which is the South China Sea. The Indian Navy emphasised having three aircraft carriers will allow simultaneous operations of at least two aircraft carriers on the eastern and western seaboard, one in the Bay of Bengal and the other in the Arabian Sea, while the third one remains in maintenance and overhaul. This will reduce operational gaps and having an additional carrier will enhance force structure without straining resources. Having three carriers will enhance combat capabilities and provide critical support for amphibious and humanitarian operations as well. As the maritime landscape evolves rapidly with geopolitical dynamics changing every hour, the robust presence of aircraft carriers will act as a deterrent and discourage destabilizing activities in the Indian Ocean. They will help keep India pace with the navies deployed in the Indo-Pacific region and assert its preeminence in this region by power projection. India aims to not stop there. The Defence Minister also stated on the 15th of May that, quote, we will not stop at three carriers. We will go on to make five, six and more. The development comes on the same day China's third aircraft carrier tested waters quite literally. The announcement by the Indian government on the same day cannot just be mere coincidence. China continues to build a multi-carrier force and is planning to have at least six carriers by 2035 according to a report published by the U.S. Department of Defense in 2021. Let's look at how Beijing is projecting power in the sea currently. The PLA Navy has two operational aircraft carriers, the Soviet X Variag or Liaoning and the Shandong, commissioned in 2012 and 2019 respectively. Both of these use the short takeoff but arrested recovery or STOBAR method to launch and land aircrafts. But all eyes now are on China's next generation 80,000 to 85,000 ton aircraft carrier come warship called Fujian, which headed to sea trials just last week. First launched in 2022, the mysterious vessel likely experienced delays brought by COVID-19 pandemic. According to reports, the aircraft carrier could be the world's first dedicated fixed-wing drone carrier. Fujian is also the first Chinese carrier to be equipped with electromagnetic catapults similar to the technology used by the US aircraft carriers to launch their fighter jets. This will help launch the Hemi KJ-600 Airborne Early Electronic Warning System or AWACS from Fujian, thus increasing the situational awareness of the carrier battle group Manifold. Its flight deck also has five helicopter landing spots marked out. The large ship is expected to require at least 2,000 sailors and 1,000 aircrew to operate. Photos of the new carrier during her sea trials gave a clear idea of her configuration. Fujian marks a huge technological leap from the earlier two carriers of the People's Liberation Army Navy. It's even bigger than the carriers made by the United Kingdom and France. 
This newest Type 003 Fujian will be able to operate a larger and more capable fleet of shipborne aircraft. The building of three large battle carrier groups by China poses a huge threat to India because China is reportedly planning to permanently station one of its carriers in the Indian Ocean region. This will be supported by the Chinese military base in Djibouti, which is on the western edge of the Indian Ocean, along with Reem in Cambodia on the eastern edge of Indian Ocean, along with Gwadar in Pakistan, Hambantota in Sri Lanka, and and Kyukpu in Myanmar, surrounding India from all sides like a string of pearls. The recent announcement by the Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh of building five to six new aircraft carriers seems a far-fetched dream for India at the current moment. However, in the long run, it seems quite necessary. It will also require supporting ships and infrastructure along with significant monetary investment and an increase in the defence budget is likely. However, there have been reports of major setbacks and delays for the Chinese carrier fleet, which can ensure INS Vishal's path to success. Incidentally, Liaoning, one of China's aircraft carrier, only emerged from a year-long refit that started in February 2023. And Shandong, the second aircraft carrier, has been at her Sanya home port since last December. As Fujian prepares to enter service, the People's Liberation Army Navy has a lot of personnel to raise and train as well. Observers highlight constraints that the People's Liberation Army Navy faces currently in forming its carrier fleet, as the service still faces manpower constraints. Fujian might even take longer than 1.5 years to integrate thanks to new technologies and equipment. It's important to look at some countries that have continuous and reliable aircraft carrier presence. Currently, the United States leads with a fleet of 11 carriers consisting of USS Gerald Ford class, which is undeniably the biggest and most technologically advanced aircraft carrier in the world. This is followed by China with three, and then India, UK and Italy with two each. Asian countries like Japan and South Korea are also racing to project power at sea and make their own carriers. The Japanese, in fact, have converted the helicopter carrier JS Izumo into an aircraft carrier capable of flying the F-35. It is also converting another helicopter carrier JS Kaga. South Korea has a plan to launch an aircraft carrier by 2030, marking a significant stride in its own naval deployment efforts. Have your say, does India need a fleet of 7 to 8 aircraft carriers to become a true blue water navy? Leave a comment below and hit the like button and remember to subscribe to InConnect News.